Nick's a Luton fan. Nick, good morning. Good morning, Alex. How are you? Good, thank you. Nick, before we go any further, can you establish for this one way or the other, is Stuart Atwell a fan of your club? I've got no idea, but if he is, he made all the wrong decisions then, didn't he? Because, because we all want Forrest to win. <laughs> you want, you would have wanted a draw, presumably. No, no, we would. Well, no, we would. Have, if if we'd have won Saturday, we'd have we'd have wanted a draw. But because we didn't win Saturday, realistically, we would we'd want uh, Forest to win because Everton have still got to come to us. They've got Liverpool. They've got Brentford next Saturday, which it won't be an easy game for them. And their last last game of the season is away to Arsenal. <laughs> so realistically, we'd want Forest to win that one. So what what is your take then on on Atwell and? Uh... The, the possibility of him um, being partial towards Luton and exercising that in, uh, partial in, in a way that would be detrimental to Forrest. What, what's your well, take on all that? Well, well personally, personally speaking, uh, being a Luton fan, and he is, a, if he's supposed to be a Luton fan, uh, he got it all wrong. He should have given the decisions to Forrest. Um, but uh, maybe he's a blue, really, an Everton fan. Love it. Nick, thank you for that. Samia is a, a, a Forest fan. Samia, good morning. Morning, morning. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me on. Not at um, all. What's your take on this? But I just want to say a couple of things, really. Right. The, the first thing is, I echo what the other Nottingham Forest fan in, in, um, said in some respects. Now, I, I understood the tweet that Forest put out was unprofessional. And as soon as the game finished and I saw it, I thought, what have you done? That's, that's, that's the first thing I want to say. It wasn't right what they put out. But what you've got to understand is this is weeks and months of frustration from Forrest. In, in, in games that we've had where decisions have gone against us, the Bournemouth game, the Liverpool match, you know, the Brentford game, you know, there, there's all sorts of the, 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 other, the West Ham penalty that we didn't get at, at home. This yesterday, I think, was just weeks and months of accumulation of frustration from Forrest of where they put that tweet out. Now, I understand what you're saying about the fact that um, you know that obviously you, um, Mark Klassenberg met with the PGMOL and they they kind of planted a seed where, where they did say that, that you know Stuart Atwell, you know possibly was a Luton fan. But what I'm what I'm thinking is why why wasn't he removed anyway? You know it, at the end of the day it, it happens in other games. I just don't understand whether regardless of whether he's a Luton fan or not. Yeah, it, it could have been dealt with differently in terms of. But why, but why does it? Why does it? Why does it need to be? There's an observation. There's an assumed fact here that no one has an absolute cast iron uh, understanding of. It's assumed that he's a Luton fan. That's an assumption, right? The second part is is one would have thought that commercial sense would have detailed that if he did indeed have a compromise, he would have recused himself, which Stuart Atwell chose not to. And the PGMOL are very sensitive to any kind of controversy, know full well that Forrest have got Clattenburg in the mix, right? So if there was any controversy and there was a real issue, why would the PGMOL have doubled down? Why would they have made this problem for themselves? Well, I do I understand what you're saying, Simon, but... Looking at it from Forrest's point of view, this could cut, have catastrophic um, consequences on our season. Really, these all all three of those penalty those decisions were penalties. They they were, all three were blatant penalties. So why? Well, that's very that's very subjective, is, is, That's yeah, very subjective because you've got professional footballers on match of the day on Sunday evening saying that two of them weren't and the third one well, was. I, I have to disagree with that. Per, I think all one three person. were penalties. They were penalties. They were penalties. You think they were penalties? Yeah, they were penalties. Yeah, but it's still they subjective. Were, all, all, all three of those were, were, were yeah, penalties. Can I ask a question? Has you, have the decisions, in your opinion, have they gone against you more since Clattenburg's been involved at Forest or was it... But I have to say one thing about this Clattenburg thing. I, when, I, when I saw that he was going to be whatever he is, our referee analyst, I don't understand... What this that's about? I think it's a bit of a bizarre, bizarre and silly decision from Forrest. I don't know what his what his gain is. Having so, having listened to what Simon said earlier, I don't know whether he is in it for the right reasons. Whether he's got his own personal gain or whether he's trying to stir the, the pot. As, as he, Simon was saying, he'll be a thorn sure in the side of the PG, PGMOL. He will not be happy with his his um, actions certainly over this. But the fact is, there picking holes in what the referees are, are doing. And all well, Forest that's at the games. request of the owner. And it's mm. interesting, the previous caller said, well, it's an established fact in Europe that they do referee analysis. Oh, yes, it's an established fact. That's why Barcelona are mired in a corruption case around specifically referee, referee analysts. So it's not an established fact. It's not used in the Premier League. And it's ultimately, I think, a poor call from Forest. So, so Mia, just before you go, the, the upshot is, I think you said at the beginning of your call that you thought Forrest's post-match statement was ill-advised. 
I did think that, but having slept on it, I, in in a way, I, you know, I, I, I'm not surprised why they've not done it. I think it's just frustration on their part as well. And you know what? The, the decisions have been very, very poor. They've gone against us time and time again. And with the points deduction, this could this could really relegate us. So if yeah, we had got for... one or two of those penalties, yeah. we could have we could have won the game. Thanks for your call. Um, uh, Steve is a West Ham fan who wants to throw his uh, opinion into the mix. And why not? Steve, good morning. Good morning. Um, so one thing you haven't said about was the uh, Real Madrid-Barcelona game yesterday. It was won by a goal that they don't know whether it was a goal because Spain doesn't have the technology. Goal and technology, like that's that. right. Yeah. Right. Now, a game like that, um, why hasn't it got it? Why haven't they got it? We should... Do with VAR what we should do with David Moyes, and that's put him on a coach, say, thank you very much for what you've done, mind the door on your backside, bye-bye. You know. And that's your take on David Moyes, is it, Steve? Well, and, and Simon, you've got a great club there, mate. They'll be, I'm going to back him for a cup next year, boy. <laughs> um, Steve, incidentally, just before you go, is your solution to get rid of VAR, is that right? Mate, they're, they're, we have, we had, we've had more, um, what's the word, controversy since that's been in, involved than we've ever had before in all the 60 years that I've been going football. You've also had very many more decisions right than wrong. No, it's, it's not. It's the one no, 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 turn your no into a yes. Wrong. That's factually correct. It's the ones they get wrong that cause the, the, the thing. But hasn't it always um, been like, such, Steve? I mean, we've moved we've moved from saying that the referees on the field are incompetent to now saying that VAR is, and we've moved from the position of saying, well, once VAR's in, we'll get everything right, nothing will ever be wrong. Isn't it that sort of characterisation that's creating the problem rather than the reality of VAR? The main thing with VAR is lack of spontaneity. It will still make mistakes because it has human interaction at this moment in time with this generation of technology. That we've got the wrong humans in charge of it. The more it, it, correct. It's not VAR. VAR is a... So who should be in charge the of it, Steve? It's, it's well, embarrassing the referees. Who should be in charge of it, Steve? Well, the referees and ex-players, but you're not going to pay them enough because they, they, they're not, they, they get too much money nowadays anyway. But, Steve, so, if ex-players were in charge of VAR, on Monday morning, if a decision is, went against West Ham, you'd be on oh, saying, oh, you know the thing about that ex-player? Oh, you you let it, him but, be in charge how, of VAR, and he's a former Chelsea it, player, and that's why he didn't no, allow West no, Ham's no, goal. Jim, Would it not be the case? Jim, Steve, bear with me because I'm with you on this. Steve, bear with me on this. There are so many ex-players. You could have a pool of ex-players that didn't referee the teams they had an association with. Would that help? They've, they've got to do something to improve the quality of refereeing. VAR was there to make life easier for them. All it's done is created debate and embarrassed them. And every Monday morning, we'll be sitting here talking about what the referees missed what bad decision that was. And Steve is right. I, I, I'm an advocate for introducing players. And not every single player could do it. Not every single ex-player could go there and do it. But there's a hell of a lot of them could. And you could have such a large pool where a referee, sorry, for that particular game, a player wasn't involved if he had a direct association in his history with that football club. So Steve, it, I'm with you, mate. Well is done. It, is it ex-players to the rescue then, Graham? Well, what, how else are you going to do They're not exactly it? queuing up, are they? Well, Offer them money. There's that much money in the Premier League. We talk about this league being the best, most attractive, most watched, most desirable, richest league in the world. We've got money floating around in every area of it. Give something to the, if it is the PGMOL. Give them the money. Start it. Because right now, every Monday morning, these debates are happening. It's not occasionally. It's every Monday morning. Mm. I don't think we've ever hinted towards... Uh, there's ever been a hint towards corruption, though, Graham. And 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 that's that is the direction in which we are going with this one. Um, our patience has been tested multiple times, save Forest. Nottingham Forest will now consider its options. I mean, what what are the repercussions for Forest after that, Simon? They'll be in, they're bound to be in hot water for that. Well, yeah, because I mean, are they? Is it too strong to say it? They 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 are alleging corruption. Well, they are to some extent, and they, but they're, they're citing it on an individual. They're not alleging, alleging corruption on a systemic basis. They're talking about an individual and an individual's uh, motivations. Um, you know, this argument from F Forrest is all fur cut no knickers. These are the rules. Referees make decisions. And if you are going to do it, you're not going to do anything because there's nothing you really can do. And you can wheel Nick DeMarco out and he can get his cash register out and tell you how much it's going to cost you to have you represented in some tribunal with the FA to cover your backsides for what you've said now. But the bottom line is, is, is that you're not going to do anything because there's nothing that you can do. 
what you're going to have now is a consequence for a ridiculous outburst. There is a way to operate. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not I'm removing emotivity from the equation of football, but the standard bearers of the football club, being the chairman and owner, have to be held to a higher standard than football managers on the side of a pitch. I'm sorry, they do, because they're the ones that are supposed yeah. to be enforcing standards. And this fella, from his diet upwards, doesn't hold himself to any great standards. There's a former uh, ex-player, ex-manager getting in touch with me. The foul and handball laws are subjective. Hopefully they'll stay that way. I most certainly agree with the referee on the first two decisions at Goodison. In other words, no pens. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.